Okay, moving on now from uh, the Manchester um, City Chelsea clash tomorrow evening, Saturday. Um, we know that another big story in sports is about uh, Naomi Osaka. She says she's pulling out of all press conferences because of, sh of her mental health. You know, she put out a statement saying reporters keep asking the same questions over and over again. She's answered this question before. They keep asking her about it. And when you refuse to go out for these press conferences, you get fined, you know, by your team, by your club. You know, so basically this whole issue um, with her, and we know that she also put videos of how other um, sportsmen, you know, face the same issue. One of them came out to say, look, addressing the, the, the journalists in the room saying, I have one answer for you. I'm simply here because I don't want to be fined. Whatever question you ask me, I am going to give you the same answer, you know? So how do you think this, first of all, the main issue she's talking about, sportsmen being forced to speak to press, especially because she mentioned, especially when they lose. She said, when you lose, you know, the, the pounding and the grounding of questions by sportsmen to say, oh, why did you lose? What do you think, do you think you can, could have done better? How it affects the mental health of these players and how they could, that she mentioned how she saw one of the players basically break down in the press room and cry. I think um, what this has done to we journalists, including all of us here, is that it's put the, the, the job itself on the burner this morning. What Naomi Osaka has done to the world is to actually put the inadequacies of some of our colleagues on the burner this morning. Um, when Naomi said this, the press went to work and a whole lot of um, French press people, the English media, went and said, now, the headline said, Naomi Osaka has mental issues. You know, and that put our job on the front burner because what she actually meant was when a sports person loses, the mental stability of that person is shaken. Mm -hmm. And then to ask her a question about the loss is bad enough. It affects that. And then she says, you see, I was talking about press men and the media, always thinking about the exclusive, running back to the office with a good story, not thinking about the sports person you are talking to. And I see what they've done now. They've now misquoted what I said to mean I have mental issues. Now it puts our job on the burner this morning, as in, mm. do we actually cool down? In the course of looking for these exclusives, do we run back to the office or, or, or just get there? Do we actually wait to weigh the assignments we've gone for before we run back to our offices? Now, what she meant was, I have friends. I don't know if Osaragi has that. I have a friend who is a big Man United fan. And whenever his, his wife is at home, he goes to, like most men, he goes to watch the game with the boys. You know, but they have a cable in their house. So the wife is monitoring the game while they're watching the game with the boys. Immediately, Manu loses that game. She takes all the food for dinner into the freezer. He's not eating again. You know, that's how some people take yes. their loss, you know? And so what Naomi meant was, it's punishments that have lost the game. It's worse off. It's like you have a to, dead horse. It's now worse off to actually force me to discuss it. And then if I don't discuss it, you'll find me. You know, she thinks it's not right. Um, the guy she said is an NNL player in the USA, and the guy was like, I am here because I will be fine if I'm not here. I don't want to be here. My team just lost this game. So how about the clubs themselves? You know, the fact that they put this pressure on players to speak about their losses and whatever it is. Naomi Osaka and the rest of the people who have come out to talk this morning are actually blaming the pressmen, saying the, 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 the pressure... It's coming from the pressmen who want their exclusives, whether you lose or win. But the fines are not coming from the journalists, are they? Yes, the questions are coming from I mean, the, the fines, the fines for not No, the fines the actually come from the players and goes to, most times, charity homes. No, I mean, who's fining who? The organizers of the event find the, the participants for not answering the question from journalists. That's what I'm saying. So the, these organizers of the events, I mean, what's their own share of the blame? Well, they are the ones who should understand that if someone loses in an event, whether it's tennis, whether it's football, the person has a right to say no comments. The person has a right to say, I don't want to talk about it. You know, it's like my job, our job that we do, as unfair as it seems. I'm in a very bad mood. I'm coming to the office and somebody runs to me and says, hey, Aneta, hey, Osaroge. The society expects me to put up a smile. And I, I do put it up. You know, as hard as it seems, with, with, with all the things I'm going through, mm -hmm. and still, you know, and, and what Naomi is saying is respect the person's feelings too. As in, yes, be empathetic. Yeah, because she says she had a friend who was a tennis player, never became as big as she did. And the last event she came for, because of the questions from the pressmen, 
she became depressed. She almost committed suicide. And she stopped playing tennis. And wow. she felt she was talented enough to actually beat her. So they were training partners that the girl would have been a, a future in tennis. But because of the questions they asked the day she lost, she was in tears, she became depressed, almost committed suicide, wow. and stopped playing tennis. Yes, now Mosaka so, really said she would not entertain people who doubt So Naomi her said she doesn't, she doesn't mind. And, you know, she puts a joke into it, mm -hmm. into her tweet. Yes. She puts a joke and she says, I am not going to answer your press, con your mm -hmm. press conferences. And I heard that you guys take the money that you find us for to help charity homes. No, she, did she say I heard? I thought she said I hope. No, she, they, they, yes, but the monies do go to charity homes, you know. And she's insisting now, she's hoping that our own fine she go to goes mental, to yeah, mental charity. homes, you know, where, where people have, charity homes people who have mental problems. Because yeah. she's actually taking the fines because of mental issues. So please make sure my money goes to charity homes who run mental issues. You know, I think she has a point somewhere. I, I think do, I the society do not, are not fair to public figures. And then um, it, it's sad to note that um, oh. someone like Serena, someone like, um, like um, Venus, who are very passionate, Rafael Nadal, who are passionate about their game. You know, footballers like Ronaldo, like Lionel Messi, who don't want to lose. They want to win all the time. You know, to now ask them, it, it, it's fair to footballers. It's fair to basketballers. You know, Ronaldo is walking out of the pitch wow. and then he's saying no comments. You let him go, no fine. But a tennis player says no comments and his press conference time, you must talk. Well, mm. you know, you can't pick and choose, you know, when you have comments and when you don't have comments. You know, they can't only interview you when you win. Um, you know, those interviews happen whether you win or you don't win. You know, yes, I get the part where it's unfair, you know, and I totally um, agree with Naomi Osaka that, you know, the uh, journalists themselves need to be more empathic and, you know, more, more considerate, you know, when a, uh, an athlete loses a game or is not in the best of moods, you know, so you... So you that's, where Naomi, that's where that Naomi's question comes from when it says that is the mental state of the athlete mm. more important than the exclusive to the media? It should be. That's what she know, asked. It should be, you know, but, you know, journalists, of course, want to get the best, you know, exactly out of Exactly my point. And, and that's where... where and if you remember, they also, the... they also did the same thing to um, Jose Mourinho. They yes. hound him and hound him and hound him and ask questions that you know would, you know, uh, piss I him I know off. him. Yeah, they, they do that on, on yeah. purpose, you know. So she does have a good point, you know. Unfortunately, it's a part of the whole process. There's TV rights that have been bought, you know, and um, the, the money needs to be made from some of all these things. True and that. And not you know, have this side and, don't, and not have the sure other that. side, you know, sure um, or end um, the game right after, you know, a, a loss. But she does have a point. Anyway, I um, think we can wrap it up here. Uh, we're having a conversation coming up next uh, on the Nigerian constitution. And uh, the question, of course, is do we need to amend the current constitution or we need a brand new constitution? The 2014 CONFAB report is also uh, going to be brought up in discussion again, once again, um, of what use was, you know, the whole of that CONFAB. And will we need to pick, you know, certain items from that report and put it in, uh, in our constitution? We'll get into that after this short break here on The Breakfast. Thank you very much, Wally Scott. Thank you.